at first. Say hi. Lindsay, say hi. Yeah, she's a sweetheart. She's a good girl. So, there's a couple people I'm talking to. I'm going to put this down for a second so I can get my bag of popcorn. Yeah, so there's a couple people I'm talking to. One of them is having a issue, a problem with not hating himself. Another has an issue with thinking themselves a monster, and that's something I have unique experience with. Not something I'm happy about, but you know, hey, people lie to us. That's not new. What is new is the fact that I think God plants us here for a reason. Plants each and every one of us where we're at for a reason. And sometimes moves us. Keeps us, I don't want to say in limbo, but keeps us agile. Keeps us from being able to be planted for reasons. Some of which we know and others which I don't think we do know. So, one at a time... I think it's natural to struggle with self-hatred simply because of, hey, this is your fault. You are the cause of this. All of this is because of you, etc., etc. All of this points down to either being blamed by like a family member, someone who we want to make proud, someone we want to be proud of us, Someone who said, you know, we just want to know that we matter. We're worth something. That they're there for us. There's, there's, there's quite a few reasons why we would look for people and consequently struggle because of what they're saying. And internalize certain things. One of them being anger and, you know, perfectionism. Like, we're never good enough. We must try hard. And keep trying. Perfectionism is not like a good end goal, so to speak. But it's a good way to say, hey, let's try to be better. Let's let's strive to be the best that we can be. That, in a couple of the other videos I've done before, it goes along lines of sanctification, which is the biblical version of being the better, being the best version of yourself. Kind of like, am I cooking the popcorn too much? I hope so. I think so. The black spot says maybe. And I'm smelling the smoke. <laughs> so, self hatred. Never denying yourself. Never, never denying yourself. Let me back up here. You're never accepting faults. You're never accepting the fact that you're not going to be perfect and that you have boundaries and limits. It's like, no, this is not good enough. I cannot accept this as an answer. And growing up with, not not with this, but seeing others struggle with this, and then getting to my age, a couple of years, between now and 2019, seeing this in the other young men who I've talked to firsthand, and well, hearing about this firsthand and talking to them, listening to their stories, it's it's an eye opener. Because self hatred comes from a place where there's a lot of rejection, a lot of pain, a lot of broken heartedness that honestly takes a lot to heal. Sometimes I think it takes it takes something soft warm and caring whatever that may look like sometimes i think that comes in the form of addiction sometimes i think that comes in the form of something that you can be around whether it's in person or online obviously you want something like that in your life somehow but i, I can't really explain that anymore i don't know everyone should have had a mother in their life to actually care for them to say hey this is who you are. Let us help you out. Let us encourage you. And give give um, someone the feminine 
nature that they need. Whereas men provide the structure. So men, women provide the nurture and men provide the structure. And a lot of this helps out with things like self-hatred and self-loathing and realizing a lot. Or, like I said, being blamed for a lot. Saying this is all your fault, this is your problem, etc. And so self-anger gets internalized either inappropriately or way too much where everything's your fault. Self-sabotaging is something I used to do when I was a kid. Faulty self-defense mechanism. If I'm going to be blamed for something, why don't I just go ahead and get it over with? You know, but that's kind of like along the lines it went. And that's like the only way I think I can make this be understandable and relatable to others. It's uh, not pretty, but I have some experience with this. I just... I'm not happy, but, you know, sometimes things in the past, they come back in ways either to bite you or to be used as lessons to help someone else, like, say, if you have kids or friends who are struggling. As it is, I suspect every year from now until who knows when, mentorship and fellowship are going to be on the decline. Men are growing up with less and less help as these years go on by. Something I've recognized, something that I try to speak out on. This matters. And if I become more relevant as time goes on, I think this will just help. This will help. This will unfortunately help explain a lot. There's more I want to say, but I'm just kind of winging it right now. And I know there's scriptures that talk about this, but it talks more about centering your faith, centering your hope, forgiveness, understanding that we're faulty, that we need a Savior, that we need others to help us out in our times of need. And it also says go to others and ask for help. Not in those words, though. Proverbs, songs, Proverbs and other passages in um, the New Testament do talk about this. It's all over the place. Not, not the ones that talk about Jesus' travels and, and experiences. Now, when Jesus interacts with others directly, like the woman at the well, he does say, like, go and sin no more. And... I'm wrapping this all up as far as that goes, but he explains to the woman what she's done. And sometimes I'm wondering if that self-anger and self-loathing could just simply be simply answered with the whole, like, this is what you've done, including your faulty defense mechanisms, and that you don't need to do this. Letting go, forgiveness, for forgiving yourself and forgiving anyone else, accepting your limits, your faults, you know, taking the good with the bad, all of this helps to get that part of yourself unstuck, whatever it may be. The second part is, it ties in with this a little bit. Oh, there's my rabbit. Rabbits, he likes to run up and down the hall sometimes. Um, even though his back leg and properly healed he doesn't let that stop him he just he likes to explore he likes to chew and hopefully I have enough cardboard back for the back there for him so he doesn't like chew on anything too important there's no cords there thankfully um but yeah yeah the, this other person who I'm talking to is struggling with feeling and seeing themselves like a um Dang it! Seeing with them, seeing themselves like a, a monster, and that's something I've struggled with too for a while. I don't think there really is going to be the answer that we want. I just think that there will be more and more responses and answers as we go on. 
something that we discover, something that we come to understand. There are those who choose to be the worst of themselves. There are those who choose to not hold fast to what Christ says about renewing your mind because that plays a big part of it, you know, where you stay stuck and mm, anger and some other things end up smoldering in your mind, just getting worse and worse and worse. There's that. There's also what I've noticed where people throw away their humanity. I think this is more relevant when you play Beast Born, uh, Bloodborne, excuse me, where you see these transformations actually happen. Werewolf movies help too, um, but that's different in the sense where it's a physical transformation and not an internal struggle where you were lied to and you believe these lies. Obviously, if you struggle with this in real life, this is very different because it's not like this is something either scientific or something physical or maybe even a curse. I suspect there's some curses involved, but who knows? I'm not like an expert on this subject and I haven't like bothered looking into this. It doesn't affect me at all in any way, shape, or form. Not directly, but having encountered bits and pieces here and there, including uh, this one gift that someone gave me that I still do not want to talk about openly. <sighs> I think God allowed that to be a part of my life in some way, shape, or form. And I think he has a sense of humor as well as an understanding of how things could go. I'm just simply trying to be as careful as I can for multiple reasons. But anyway, besides that, being a monster is something that isn't something to be scared of. Though I don't necessarily think you should hold to it as an identity. Scripture is clear on certain parts, though, is that if you hold fast to Christ, one of these things, which I believe is a label, not an identity, that you're going to be a known as a child of God. And if you, there, there's furthermore, if you try to go bring peace to the nations, you're going to be a peacemaker. You're going to be, I forget the, the term for it, but um, you're going to be known as someone who brings peace. It's, it's a term for that. Like, you can try to go after certain things that will give you names, that will give you um, labels, and if you want to call them, identities. It'll add to who you are. And you're not, you don't have to be defined by your looks alone. You don't have to be defined by the lies that you were told. Though, I think God understands since we're fallible and we're broke and we're human, and that sin will always be a part of us, that sometimes we're going to need to have this a part of our lives so that we can when this, the truth is presented to us, that we're going to actually understand it because we understand the lies. We understand all of that which we've grown up with. There's a couple of verses that talk about how um, this planter was instructed to let the weeds grow up with the, the seeds, to not damage the seeds. And then once um, it was time to harvest the 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 wheat from the, the weeds, it was a lot easier to pull them apart. I think that comes back here in a very easily understandable way. Not, it's not always in the best case though. Like sometimes like it's going to hurt because you've, you've allowed this stuff to remain entrenched in your life when there were opportunities upon opportunities to allow this to be removed from your life with less pain. I think that pain is can sometimes be avoided. And in a sense, the more pain and more trauma and more problems in your life, the more scars you will have. I mean, scars can be something to be proud of because of what you've overcome. But if you allow this stuff to to linger in your life when you could have removed it those scars can be a reminder of something else of what you could have done a lot like 10, 10 years ago who knows but yeah what you could have taken action against years years ago and where it would never have been a thorn in your side to begin with that being said and this is 
I'm being a little facetious and a half teasing here. I'm trying to know on a positive note. If you're going to be a monster, be the cuddliest monster you could ever be. You know? Be like one of the furries out there. <laughs> Donna first here. Go around hugging others. Be the furriest monster you could be. <laughs> it's dumb, I know. But that's the truth. I want to say, though, there's some truth to it, though, where you can take these lies and do something amazing with them protect those around you because hey you've been through this you don't want them to suffer and you've seen some real garbage considering there's a video i saw and i'm half tempted to put it down below or talk about something else it's these terrorists who've gone around shooting others and then knifing this one terrorist knifes this guy on the ground like knifes his throat repeatedly that angered me this was literally yesterday and I, I was like, I, I can't believe this. This is this is this angers me. It's too quick to jump the gun and saying that these guys are monsters. I mean they're not affecting kids. They're not pedophiles, they're not affecting kids, they're not trying to they're not trying to destroy um, children. You can take some solace in that. They want to hurt others for a political reason or because whatever. You don't follow their same faith or religion. And I'm not pointing fingers here. I think that's too easy. Getting at the heart of the issue here. Redirecting the focus back to the whole, you're a monster, these lies, where you feel the need to self-destruct or hurt others. Once you can identify that, you can move on with your life. And you can enjoy your life. I know there's people who joke about how, like, you know, you can't heal others by hurting others. And then some smart ass will be like, well, if you play Bloodborne, you can. Durr. Yeah, that's a mechanic built into the game. Hurt others, recover the life that you just lost. Ugh. The only other one that I can remember is Borderlands 2 with Krieg the Psycho. He'll, he'll yell out random things like, um, uh, I'm trying to remember, it's been years since I played him. Uh, give me blood! Uh, what was it? Give me blood. Um, I'm losing blood, give me yours. And you don't go down until I say you go down, or something like that. There's a lot of things related to blood and meat cycles and other hilarious things. In the trailer, you hear him scream out poop train at the top of his lungs which is hilarious like the guy is built to be quite a few things one of them is humorous thankfully uh, but yeah he's a real badass psycho as far as his label goes because um, he was one of those villains in the first game but anyway he's technically a monster because he had what was it called? He had stuff injected into him. Um, you go around collecting these things. The, you collect this stuff in the second game that was released upon the completion of the first game. Slag. There we go. I think you collect slag in some parts of the game. But this guy was literally ejected with him. That's why he became mentally unstable and why his body and his mind like separated and operated on two different levels. <sighs> yeah but anyway it's he's a different perspective on you know hurting yourself making hurting others to make yourself feel better and being a monster and all that this is honestly one of those topics that could go on a little bit longer and with professional looks out on it the biblical side of it is very precise though is that we are image bearers of christ we are children of god we're not made to be monsters these are lies and falsehoods that are placed upon us or that we end up believing and latching on to it's it's a real work in progress that takes time to be removed and replaced because once you remove a lot of this stuff it needs to be replaced with something healthier and more positive But allowing it to grow in your life is probably not 
what is best. I say probably, looking back in hindsight, is because of the trauma and the years that are lost that could have been spent elsewhere. All right, I'm going to finish my bag of popcorn here. So uh, I hope this was helpful and I hope this was something for you to think about. You know, something, something good, something encouraging. I'm currently working on some other stuff. Once I get done with this, I'll be working on the video um, of me and my gym trainer talking because I got the groundwork set. I just need to export it to a video format and then upload it to YouTube, which will take like 10 hours, up to 10 hours, give or take. And some other stuff too, which is pretty cool. Um, but that's the only thing that I'll say as far as right now. Actually, there's one other thing. I'm trying to do a, do a fun video of like, you know, showing that disease is like sin. And from a fun perspective, a game perspective. And it fits very well. Because this disease consumes everything. I Yes, there are exceptions, but in general, organics as well as metal are not safe. And it, I would like to show some proof here just because it's pretty cool. Pretty cool as far as what it does. And you're in for a treat. All right. Thanks for sticking around. And I hope this has been helpful to you.